creating fast water and white water. Stay tuned and all will be revealed. Well, good evening everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, this has now set and has um, been there for 24 hours. So you can see that's well gone off. Now, what I want to show you is the actual, the actual place itself. So you can see this bridge is around about there. Okay, and if I bring you round, you can actually see that the edge of the weir is brown. So one of the things I'm going to be doing is painting that brown. And then when I come to do the water effects, to actually then put clear Mod Podge gloss over the top, and that will then gloss it all back up again. So... It is a bit difficult to see because I had to turn the light off because it was creating um, quite a, um, a glare. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Now, back onto the detailing here now. So you can see this is the area Gloit, Gloit Cliff Viaduct. And that's the type of effect that we're going for on this part of the wall of the river. Now. I've bought some of this, which is Mod Podge Gloss. I've given it a good shake. And what you do, see this is a brand new pot. I've not even unsealed it yet. Actually, I've got a feeling that's part of the lid. Well, I mean, I don't know whether it's supposed to be like that, but it doesn't have stink. <laughs> so, I don't know, I've never used Mod Podge before, but the smell is horrendous. <laughs> it's, it's worse than that um, fish stuff that you buy that people use for the track. But anyway, the idea is that you paint it on. Um, I'm not putting it on massively thickly, but I do want to um, create some fast moving water. Actually, I will put it on a bit thicker than that. People tend to put it on and sort of dob it on. Kind of like that and so on now it's advised to do a little bit at a time so I'll show you this tiny little bit here and then I'll go ahead and finish the rest off cam kind of like that that's about as much as I'll do for this tiny little bit so I've I bought these that's a plastic straw, which I bought off Amazon. Very good when you go to the fast food chains when they give you a cardboard straw and you blow. Right, in hindsight, instead of starting at the end I already have, you start at the far end, the opposite end, and then work backwards. That way you're creating the little eddies or little waves over the top of the one in the front. And then you keep working backwards and then the water looks like it's being blown by the wind. Right, there it is. So what I ended up doing, as I said, I brushed this bit with the brush and this bit, I initially dabbed it with the brush, but it wasn't working so well. So I got a toothbrush and dabbed it over with that. Um, and I might come back to it when it's maybe another 15, 20 minutes after it's hardened off a little bit in the hope that I can create some little peaks with it, but we'll see. And then blue through the brush as it's got th through the straw, I mean, as it got further up there. Okay, so I'll let that dry, I'll show you shortly. Right, welcome back. Now, I'm not gonna go into huge amounts with this, but to give you the general idea, um, that's just white paint, white emulsion just happens to be, but any um, artist or modeling paint will do the job. Now, the idea would be that I copy what I see here. So there is an amount of white and I'm literally just dabbing at the bottom there and so on just dabbing it on and it's quite thick until about there that type of thing and then if you notice it's sort of lines so all I'm going to do just draw out lines just in different directions 
and just build it up. Lines going in all sorts of directions, some heavy, some light. And just sort of do it like that, really. Just keep building lines. And as it gets further out, it starts to get less. And hopefully, I'm just catching the tops of the water. There you are. I've, t I've literally just put it on a little bit more water. That's where all these fine streaks are. And just blend them out. That's the idea. So, oh, that's a bit too wet. A bit more water. And literally just dotting it out. And then where the heavy water bit is, and just go back in with a little bit more pure white. Right, there it is with the water effects in. Now, as I said in, in captions in previous clips, I did do this again. Um, if you remember when I started, um, I put the Mod Podge on quite thickly and then I blew through a straw, but I was blowing downwards and even that direction was what I should have done, according to a video that I watched afterwards. Start here and blow this way. That way the waves or eddies look like they're overlapping the one in front and therefore the water is travelling in the correct direction, i.e. that way. You can see it quite clearly there. The water is travelling um, in the direction of the weir. So there it is. That's all the scenery back in. And uh, you can get the whole impression now. The river going off into the distance, turning the corner. Hence that black bit there. And uh, going off miles and miles away. So it's travelling down at high speed. And the idea, like I said before, water turns a corner there and goes off into the distance. But when you look at it from this side, you don't know that's happening. So that's the general idea. But uh, there we go. Right, let's go and have a look at Tor Vale and what happened with that. Right, I'm finally on to Tor Vale. Now, I'll explain what happened and what I did to correct so, it. What I've done here, as I said, there is a lot of water running down through this bit and quite deliberately. So you can see these flashes of white water as it's going over underwater rocks, just catching little rocks there. Really pleased with the way that weir's come out. And I did that in exactly the same way as I did the one upstairs and I showed you. So again, just dabbing it all over with white paint and a little hair there. But again, lots of water coming down here. The ripples on this are quite big and deliberately so. Now, what happened? Well, the problem all came from how much resin do I mix up for a build like this? Having not done it before, it's very difficult to work it out. Now I've done it once or twice now, I've got a much better idea of how much resin to mix up for something like this. But I use the old volume um, calculators on, on the internet, which is length times width times depth. And I think there was another calculation involved in there to turn it into millilitres. I can't remember. But it worked out woefully short. In fact, it turned out point. 800 millilitres. Well, I can tell you for a fact this has taken probably about 250 millilitres. So obviously you're looking three times more. So what I decided to do was obviously I dammed this area up here, which I would need to do it anyway. I showed you that. But I thought if I pour water into a measuring jug and tip it in, this area here is supposed to be watertight because it's supposed to take the resin. But the water came straight through the bottom which made me think that the acrylic varnish wasn't waterproof what it actually proved to be there were gaps running all the way around the outside and there was a hole particularly that deep down in this corner here um you can't see it now but 
that was what was causing all the problems. And I didn't know that hole was there. Um, and why would I? Because it's all trees. I'd put the put the silicon right in there. I'd put, not the silicon, I'd put hot glue right up in there, what I thought. But they still left a hole. And like I said, down the side here. So that was when I had the idea of just plastering it with the um, compound. I'm going to call it compound. It's not silicon. It's a polymer type of compound. I'm not sure quite what. But anyway, that's when I plastered it all over. Poured the water again. And it noticed this big tree, which is a cheap Chinese tree, just been tarted up a bit. When it come, when the trunk goes through the base, there was a leak there. But I was able to spot it and plug that with some hot glue. Once I'd done all that and tested it for a third time, I thought I'm going to do this area here first. Check that, because if you remember, at the top of the weir, I put a very, very small dam, we're probably about two millimetres high. I was able to fill that with water, leave it for a good half an hour and nothing leaked. So I went, let it dry and then went for the resin pour on that bit only. And then finally I did the same thing with this once that had set, obviously. And again, this was solid. It didn't leak at all. That's when I knew that I got the green light to go ahead. But it did take quite a lot. Now, if I turn this over and show you the bottom, I had to rip out all of this because I'm, this is the riverbed and all this had a flat bottom of cardboard. This area here is the tunnel uh, where the trains come. Uh, it goes on New Mills line and then comes back down the side of the layout where the big back scene is. So I ripped all that out to get to this. And I thought if I plaster the silicon polymer all over this as well, I'm likely to plug the hole. And gratefully that worked. And this area here, I've put black tape on because I actually exposed the underside of the building. So when I do connect up the lighting, that's to hopefully help make it light proof. Um, I might have to put a bit more on than that, um, but we'll see. But that's basically what happened. And um, it did take about four or five days to get this one working. You can see here, this is where the tree was coming through, this yellow blob here. So what I'll do now is I'll take this back upstairs and I will show you what it looks like on the layout. Right, there it is in position. Now, there is lots of work to do in this area. Um, you can see there's a gantry falling over there. There's big gaps all over the place, particularly if you look down there, there's huge gaps down there, that type of thing. Uh, but you can get an idea of where this is going now. So this is obviously all part of New Mills and you've got New Mills Station just here and that sort of thing. So I will explain more about what I'm going to do in the next video with regard to this area. But uh, for now, I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon here on Piccadilly. Take care of yourself. Bye for now.